All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So on deck today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about shotguns and in particular buckshot. Uh, what we wanna to test today is hit probability. So there's two mis, or there's a big misconception about the shotgun by those who are quite frankly, completely ignorant of how the platform even works. Uh, you hear this all the time, but basically uh, it's the alley sweeper. You point it down the hallway or the alleyway and it sweeps all before you see it in the movies. And people who have no real experience firing buckshot from a shotgun may actually believe that to be true. Obviously, if you have any experience with it, you know that's complete and utter BS. Uh, the other is that buckshot does not spread sufficiently at home defense distances to really give you any increased hit probability. Um, and as a result, you should just, you have to aim the shotgun like a rifle. Um, and others even claim you should just simply load things like this uh, flight control buckshot, uh, which uses a special wad that really tightens up the patterns to the point of being slug-like uh, at, at most home defense distances. Uh, like many things, there's usually the true fly somewhere in between. So what we want to look at is two areas. First is hit probability, i.e. hitting the target. So. Um, Basically, if you fired a single projectile that completely missed the target and then fired the shotgun aimed in the same spot, would you hit the target? The next thing we want to look at is lethality, or that is the hit probability of striking vital organs. So obviously, if we centered up, say, our 16 pellet load here, center of the torso, all pellets stayed within the torso, the probability of striking a vital organ is extremely high. In fact, it'd almost be impossible not to strike a vital organ. If we aimed a single projectile weapon in the same way, the probability of striking a vital organ would be lower since we only have a single wound channel. So two different areas we're looking at. One, striking the target, and two, do we get a sufficient amount of shot in a region that would cause uh, a very negative effect on the target. So what we have is Federal Premium Personal Defense. This is the number four buck. Uh, it's 34 pellet copper plated, rated at 1,100 feet per second. We have some Winchester, uh, all this is 12 gauge by the way. Uh, we have the Winchester number one buck. This is a 16 pellet load. Now this is not plated shot. This is just standard lead shot, but it is buffered. Uh, it's rated at 1,250 feet per second. And then we have federal premium number one buck 15 pellet uh, rated at 1,100 feet per second. This is plated shot as this is plated shot, and it also employs flight control technology. So the flight control wad uh, really tightens up the shot groups. Uh, so we're going to see how each of these buck shots perform at five. Well, we're only going to test these two, the number one and the, the number four at the five and ten yard mark, because there's no point shooting flight control at that distance, and you'll see why uh, when we move to the 15 yard mark. So basically we're going to fire uh, the number four buck and the number one buck standard loading at five and ten yards and then we're going to fire the standard number one buck and the flight control buck shot at 15 and 35 yards and we're going to see uh, if we we're going to intentionally i'll show you the target how we're going to we're intentionally aim off the target so we're going to fudge the shot intentionally to see if firing any of these loads at these given distances would give us a respectable lethal hit whereas a single projectile weapon would completely miss so let's go ahead and give this a whirl. All right, so what I have is our aiming points are gonna be uh, 1.5 inches off the edge of the target, uh, and it's approximately four and a half inches from center. So uh, think of this situation as only the head is exposed and you're approximately, uh, for whatever reason, firing there, maybe they're firing around the door frame or something of that nature, and you go to fire at the head of the, the individual and you break your shot uh, 1.5 inches off center or off completely off the head you fudge your shot instead of shot breaking when your sights are here they break when you're here uh, would you get a hit and would it be lethal obviously with a single projectile weapon you would completely miss no effect whatsoever so with shotgun uh, loaded with that number one buck which will fire on the left without the flight control just a standard number one buck we'll fire on the left and our number four buck will fire on the right would either of those produce a hit? And if so, would that hit be potentially incapacitating? Well, let's go take a look. All right, so we're five yards away. We have our number one buck loaded. Uh, we have our Beretta 1301 Tactical. Um, this is just a standard 1301 Tactical with the standard barrel. Uh, nothing special done here. Uh, we're gonna aim in on that dot on the left and we're gonna see what happens.
All right. You can see our spread was uh, about the size of a fist. Uh, we did have one, two, three pellets strike the edge of the target, but those are pretty far out on the edge. So whether or not that would have given us the desired effect, not entirely sure. And we're looking at about a four inch spread. So a little less than one inch per yard thus far. All right, let's try the number four buck. All right, this will be the uh, Federal Personal Defense Premium number four buck, 34 pellets. All right, uh, looks like we got, uh, we're just gonna count the head, so from this point above. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got nine pellets on the head of the target, and it does look like we had one, two, uh, two that would have been an eye region, uh, three in the cheeks, uh, and then of course we'd have pierced his ear, cut his scalp up. So you be the judge. Would that be effective or not in that situation? Considering if we fired a single projectile, we would have been over here, uh, basically an inch and a half off target, no effect whatsoever. Would this be an effective hit on the head face region of an individual? You be the judge. All right, so I have all our hits taped up. Uh, we're gonna move back to 10 yards. We're gonna try this again, the same loadings. Uh, I've moved the point of aim over for the number four buck another inch and a half, so we'll be three inches off the edge of the target because judging by this spread, we're gonna see if this holds true. Uh, looks like we're gonna have some more margin of error than our number one buck. Uh, I should have noted the, the, the spread on the number four was six and a half inches, so over an inch per yard. Uh, and to keep things in perspective, you could have been an inch and a half off the edge of the target, the head portion, in any area and still gotten similar hits. So ultimately it gives you about a nine inch circle uh, that your dot could be floating around in. And as long as you break the shot within that nine inch circle, you theoretically will get similar results. All right, let's move out to 10 yards and give this a whirl. All right, we're at 10 yards uh, with our number one buck. This is the standard buffered shot, not the flight control. Right, let's go take a look. All right, again, we're gonna exclude the body hits because we're assuming the only thing visible is the head. Uh, so we have one, two, three pellets in the head. Certainly these 30 caliber pellets, uh, that would be very disconcerting to uh, to the individual, no doubt. So looks like 10 yards, uh, we definitely would have had uh, at least some uh, deterrence effect, possibly lethal. All right, let's try the number four. I forgot to mention the max spread on the number one at that 10 yards was nine and a half inches roughly. So we're spreading, we're starting to spread approximately one inch per yard, which kind of is an old adage for the typical uh, standard buckshot. So just wanted to point that out. All right, back at 10 yards, we have our number four buck. We're gonna use that uh, second aim point, aiming point up there, which is uh, three inches off the edge of the target. All right, so I already came up and counted uh, our hits, and uh, we had six in the head. Uh, we're not counting this one because it's a little low, but we had one around the eye region, forehead, uh, temple area, mouth, chin, uh, lower jaw. Uh, all 34 pellets are here. Uh, our max spread, before I forget, was about 13 inches or so, roughly. Yep, about 13 inches. So we're spreading over an inch per yard, uh, which is more spread than is typically seen with, uh, with standard buckshot, which for home defense, if we're trying to get if we're trying to get more spread, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so remember this was the uh, shot that was fudged the extra inch and a half off, so a total of uh, three inches off of the edge and six inches off center. So we, we fired our round six inches off of where we should have been aiming. We were still able to get six hits. I didn't mention before, uh, number four buck is about 23 caliber uh, diameter. Uh, this is hardened copper-plated shot, and it weighs, I believe they come in at about 20 grains a piece. So, you know, it's not the most potent shot, uh, but you do get higher numbers and uh, uh, greater hit probability. 
Uh, and at this distance, uh, this will penetrate uh, 12 inches in ballistic coordinates gel. And uh, having these hits like this, yes, that could potentially be fatal, no doubt. Uh, it's roughly equivalent to a 22 for each pellet, roughly. So there you go. All right, we're going to move back to 15 yards. We're not going to use the number four anymore because I feel this is kind of the outer edge of uh, this getting towards the outer limits. I think 12 yards would be about the max. I would employ something like this. I think that's where it's best suited. So we're going to move back to the 15. We're going to be using the standard number one, and we're going to start employing the flight control. And you'll probably see why we didn't use the flight control at the five and 10 yard distance. So let's get this going. All right, so our target from the 15 yard mark is going to be uh, more of an A zone. So think of this, uh, this is the width of the A zone. So think of this as a person who's bladed towards you or, or bladed or maybe running from uh, left to right. Uh, we're going to fudge our shot by three inches off the edge. Uh, so about six inches off center. And we'll put our standard number one on the left and our flight control on the right. And we'll see how this goes. All right, this will be our standard number one buck. All right, so we counted up our pellets. Uh, we have 14 on target. I think two went off to the left here. Again, remember we're aiming here, six inches off center, three inches off the edge. Uh, we had one, two, three, four that were centered pretty well in the, what would have been the A zone. This was certainly could prove lethal. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, we had one low here, uh, lower abdomen type region maybe, uh, and two on the line. But these four right here could have proved lethal. So there you go. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, give the flight control a shot. All right, this will be the 15 pellet number one buck flight control federal premium, 15 yards. All right, so as you can see, this is why I didn't even bother doing this at the uh, five and 10 yard. Uh, here we are at 15 yards and our spread is actually less than our standard buckshot was at five yards. So, uh, the adage, uh, saying about you need to aim your shotgun like a rifle certainly applies with the flight control at typical defense distances. Um, would this be highly lethal, high hit probability of lethal of vital organs if you centered it? Absolutely. Uh, but you definitely do need to center it. You don't have much margin of error. So I'll let you glean from that what you want. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move back to 35 yards. We're going to aim center. And we're going to fire our standard number one and in our flight control. And we'll see what we get at that extended distance. All right, and we're at 35 yards. We're going to give this a try with the standard number one buck. And we are aiming center. All right, so we're counted uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I count 11 pellets on the backer, only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven struck, eh, I guess eight. Those are on the outer edge though. So only six in the actual lines, if you would. Uh, as you could tell, if this person was bladed towards me, uh, maybe would have got a wounding graze here, but uh, overall would, wouldn't have had much effect. If, obviously if they're standing square on, would have got a, per, a peripheral hit here and there, here, but this is an example of high hit probability uh, with regards to simply hitting the target, but low probability with regards to actually striking vitals. So as you can see, 35 yards with that standard number one buck in this uh, uh, cylinder bore type barrel beyond the uh, practical effective range for defensive use. Uh, so let's go back and try to give the uh, flight control a whirl. All right, here we go, aim and center. Flight control, number one, federal premium. All right, so uh, our shot broke a little bit left, uh, right up in this region was where my dot was when the shot actually broke. So uh, the pattern did veer a little left, but nonetheless, uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, within that A zone uh, diameter. So if someone was bladed towards us, we would have had multiple lethal hits. Uh, if they were squared up, we had all but one on the white, uh, one impacted here off the target. But again, I uh, my shot broke a little bit to the left. So uh, good hit probability with regards to hitting the target, reasonable hit probability with regards to striking vitals. So the flight control at 35 yards, uh, I measured this spread. It was approximately 20 to 21 inches max. Uh, and that was because of this little outlier. But uh, 
there you go. So flight control at 35 yards uh, compared to standard buckshot, definitely the way to go. Uh, something I forgot to point out, guys, is that my point of aim on that when that shot broke was roughly right up in this region, and I had four pellets uh, would have been inside the head had I been aiming at the head. And that is something I noticed with the uh, flight control. Uh, typically I can get several pellets in the head reliably out to about 40 yards. Uh, so that's actually pretty impressive if you think about that. If you had a limited exposure target using flight control buckshot, you could potentially, aiming in on that uh, smaller target, you could actually potentially get hits out to 40 yards with a uh, decent level of reliability. So pretty impressive, just wanted to point that out. All right, so wrapping all this up, what can we glean from this? Well, the shotgun's not the infallible alley sweeper for home defense, uh, but if, depending on the load you use, it's also uh, not exactly rifle-like either. Uh, depending on the load you choose, you can increase your hit probability even at the shorter ranges uh, inside the home. Uh, and of course, uh, you can turn it into rifle-like accuracy with uh, uh, loading such as flight control at those distances. Uh, but I'll let you decide on what you take from all this. For me personally, I prefer that number four buck for uh, interior use for my home defense plan. Uh, my shots won't be uh, greater than uh, seven yards or so, uh, 10 at the max, absolute max. And uh, for me, I like that extra hit probability uh, while still maintaining enough pattern density that if you center that shot, you get full effect on the torso. Uh, and high probability of striking vitals. I wouldn't feel bad about the number one either. That number one standard uh, loading is uh, a good all-around load that uh, if you have longer hallways, anything like that, would certainly serve you well. And of course, if you can't stand the fact of having uh, the potential to have an errant pellet and you don't think you'll ever miss or, or you prefer to have rifle-like accuracy out of your shotgun at close range, flight control is definitely the way to go. Uh, for me, I think I'll keep the flight control for when ranges extend past so, uh, 20 yards or so. Uh, so law enforcement hunting situation, flight control definitely. But uh, for me, home defense, I, I, I prefer a little bit of spread. But that's me. You take the information, glean from it what you would, and uh, you ultimately decide. All right, guys, well, if you like this kind of content and you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. Share the video, helps the channel out. Uh, comment down below, tell me what you think. Did you think I have all this wrong? What's your experience with all this? Uh, so please do comment. I do appreciate the comments, but as always, guys, please keep those comments professional, and I'll see you next time.